Hi folks, welcome back. Now, any programmer worth their salt could talk for hours about how they would pick a programming language, what makes a programming language good, and what features are important to have in a language. But what does the empirical data show? That is what the paper I'm looking at today tries to examine. They look at programmers out in the field and get answers to some of these questions like what properties describe popularity? Which factors do developers give importance to when picking a programming language? How do developers acquire languages across their career? The authors use several data sources to look at these questions. Their primary data source is looking at SourceForge. They pick more than 200,000 projects from SourceForge and look at things like what languages were used in the project and what domain or category the project was from. They look at the time period from 2000 to 2010. Remember that at the time, SourceForge was the most popular repository for open source software. GitHub had not even appeared on the scene till 2008. Another data set was an online poll in which programmers were asked to rate their agreement or disagreement with a number of statements. They also were able to survey about 1,100 students in an online course on software as a service. They performed a survey on Slashdot readers. And finally, they used Olo, which tracks open source projects across a number of repositories. When looking at popularity, the finding is not that surprising because it falls off quickly and then there's a long tail of a large number of languages that are very niche. If you look at a graph that plots the popularity rank of a language against what fraction of projects they appear in, you will see that a small number, about 10, appear in a substantial fraction of projects. Note that both these axes are on a log scale. And then you have a large number of languages in the tail which appear in tiny fractions of projects. But here's a more interesting question. How does a programmer pick the language for their next project based on the language they've already used in their current project? Here is a graph that shows the probability of picking a language given which language they used in their previous project. Now you can see a bright diagonal and that's not surprising because programmers tend to pick the languages they've already used. But you'll also notice some bright vertical lines which correspond to popular languages like Java and C++ and C. And this shows that when developers move to a new language, often they end up picking one of the dominant popular languages. Another interesting thing to note is that programmers tend to stay within one language in a family of similar languages. So they'll pick one of the scripting languages from Perl, Python, or Ruby, or they'll pick one of the Lisp languages from Scheme and Lisp and so on. What this implies is that when developers move to a new language, they do it more for factors that are external to the language itself, things like the ecosystem of the language. And what this means for language designers is that if they want to win over new programmers, they should focus on one domain and try to serve that one specific domain really, really well. You can certainly see this in the case of, for example, Python, which today totally dominates the data science and machine learning domains. And that's because it has excellent libraries for those domains. And this is reflected in the data for decision making, which asks programmers 
which factors are important when you pick a language. Here is a graph of the results and it's broken out by employees in small to medium companies versus large companies. And you can see that the most important factors are things like having open source libraries, extending existing code, a language that is already used within their team. And if you look at technical properties of a language itself, things like performance or safety and correctness of the language or simplicity, they all rank pretty low. And the gap is pretty high. Some of the lowest rank factors were picked as important by about 20 to 30 percent of programmers, whereas some of the highest rank factors were picked as important by 60 to 70 percent of programmers. So the overall message of this data is that extrinsic factors far outweigh intrinsic technical factors of a programming language. Next, the authors asked programmers how long it takes them to learn a language. And the results are not terribly surprising because languages like Python and Ruby are quite simple and take only a few months to learn versus language like C++ take about a year or more to learn. Next, the authors look at how a developer's age correlates with the languages that they know. Now, there's been a lot of discussion of ageism in tech, with some people claiming that there are differences in the abilities and languages known between older and younger programmers. However, the data here very flatly refutes all such claims. If you look at how many languages developers of various ages know or are proficient in, you will see that there is almost no variation with age. Old and young programmers tend to know about the same number of languages. And even if you look at particular languages versus the age of developers that know that language, you find very little variation. And this is somewhat surprising because you would expect that an old language like Pascal would be known by older programmers compared to a much newer language like Ruby, which you'd expect to be practiced by much younger programmers. But that's not what the data shows. The data shows that both young and old programmers keep learning and they learn fast enough that there is no correlation between their age and the languages that they know. Next, the authors look at the question of what attributes of languages do programmers like or don't like? And note that while this sounds similar to the earlier question, this is more about personal beliefs of the programmer as opposed to why they would pick a specific language for the context of a particular project. And if you look at a graph of the results, you'll notice that the availability of libraries again comes out on top. Static typing is near the bottom as well as generics. The authors wanted to see how programmers perceive very specific expressive features of a language by asking them questions like what are the differences between higher order functions and objects and only a very small fraction truly understood the similarities between the expressive powers of both this shows a gap between what language designers value and what users of the language value Programmers were also asked questions about how they felt about static types versus dynamic types and unit testing. And we see that only about 36% said that they see value in static typing. 
whereas 62% see the value of unit testing. More than 30% believe that unit testing will reveal bugs that the static type system could not. At the same time, they believe that types improve readability and that they do help with the safety of the program. Only a small minority of programmers believe that the primary value of static types is to find bugs. There might be some bias in this data set because of the course that these programmers were taking, but all the same, the basic point holds in that there are still substantial populations of programmers that remain skeptical about the value of static types. So that was a quick look at a paper that surveyed programmers to ask them what they value in programming languages. And one of the key takeaways is that the availability of good libraries is extremely important. I hope that you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.